Today, we're in front of a 118 year old Mason and Hamlin double A model grand piano. This is about a six foot four. This piano was constructed in Boston and it's been completely restored. Here's the twist. Mason and Hamlin, of course, is still a current manufacturing company, one of the very few that are still left in North America. And one of the things that they've really focused on more recently has been the development of their carbon fiber action, which they call the WNG or Wessel, Nickel and Gross. It borrows in a general sense from what Kawhi really innovated with their Millennium 3, but they kind of tried to take it even further with things like carbon fiber shanks. But the other thing that they've done, unlike Kawhi, is they've made these actions available to rebuilders. And so this instrument, when it got its rebuilding treatment, has also received a carbon fiber action. So this is a 118 year old piano equipped with one of the most lightweight and one of the most interesting designs in the world of piano action that you can access. Now Mason and Hamlin's are well known for a variety of reasons. Obviously at the top of the list was that they were a very well respected manufacturer in North America going back to the turn of the 20th century. So they were certainly one of the leaders and they had several technical innovations uh, that their grand pianos had. They were primarily a grand piano maker. One of those was the tension resonator, which was a device equipped in the belly of the piano basically to maintain the right uh, kind of lateral tension on the rim. Another thing was that they used extraordinarily thick rims and those rims were continuously bent meaning that there was no separate manufacturer of an inner or outer rim. Uh, Steinway is another uh, brand that uh, rather famously does this. The third aspect of their design, they used these full perimeter plates and they used a lot of steel to create you know, extra rigidity uh, on the top of the frame as well. And then finally, they used a particularly wide tail. It wasn't the widest around, like if you look at some of the Kanabis of the same era, the Kanabis actually have a slightly wider tail, but the Masons were uh, definitely not a shorter tapered tail. There was lots and lots of soundboard real estate there to help generate the tone. And what's so great about playing a great restoration uh, is that it kind of is a time machine. You have this opportunity to go back and enjoy instruments the way that they would have behaved uh, when they were first produced if all of the work that's been done uh, has been done at a really high level. Now, of course, I already mentioned that the action uh, isn't original, but that has less bearing on the tonal behavior and more to do with uh, obviously the tactile feel of the instrument. So now let's listen to this instrument. So it's a really colorful instrument with a lot of dark tones. Now listen to this bass. And then the last thing I'm going to point out is the sustain that you get and, and I'm talking specifically about this instrument. It kind of hits this point right around the mezzo piano pianissimo range as it's descending and then it kind of levels out and just like it really kind of gets to that point where it, it 
doesn't sound like it's decaying. Anyway, I love the opportunity to share these kinds of instruments with you when they come around. And when you get one where you have both some musical points of interest and mechanical points of interest, uh, they're fun to share. Once again, my name is Stu Harrison. Thank you so much for checking us out here at Marion Pianos, and I hope to see you soon. <laughs>